All right, Grace Point family, we're here with you tonight as we uh, stand in the face of what is uh, just kind of coming down on our world is this reality that we've got to figure out how to minister uh, to our churches um, and to each other, to our families, uh, learning how to fellowship together um, all in a brand new way. And so tonight's kind of the first night of that as we look at um, Bible study online. Uh, if you're watching with us on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, we're just glad to have you and glad that uh, you can be a part of this with us. Um, and we want to encourage you to to join with us every single week. Um, in Bloomfield, this will be on Wednesday night uh, on our Facebook channel. And then on uh, in Sheraton, it will be on Thursday nights. Um, and we'll also be preaching every Sunday live uh, on our YouTube channel on Sunday mornings uh, where we'll be recorded and get that out to you as well uh, sometime that day. But it's, it's a brand new world that we're facing uh, and we've got to figure out how to stay strong in the midst of what God has called us to do, which is to preach the gospel, to uh, uplift uh, the people of the church, and to uh, continue to teach um, what the Bible says, what the Word of God says, and to be encouraged, and then to take that courage out into the world with us. And so uh, tonight we're going to continue our study in Romans that we've been doing. Marcy's been doing a great job on that, and I'm going to turn that over to her in just a couple moments. But I want to pray for us tonight, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll get started. So if you'd bow your heads with me and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Uh, we thank you that that even in the midst of this uh, upheaval and confusion and and even chaos, it feels like at times, that we can have the steady hand of God on us uh, through this time. Father God, we have your word to stand on. We have your Holy Spirit to guide us. And we have the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, to lead us on. So Father God, we just pray that you would bless this time together that you would be able to, uh, even even through um, a computer screen or a, or a phone or a tablet, you would be able to speak into our hearts uh, in ways that only you can do through the power of your word, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and that we would, just, we would just depend on you throughout all of this. So, Father God, would you be with us in this time? Be with those who, who are not feeling well, if anyone is, is just under the weather or, or needing a, a, a uplifting and encouragement, that your spirit would do that work as well. Father God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Marcy, and she'll get us started here. We're in Romans chapter 4, so I want to encourage you to open up your Bible and follow along with us as we go through Romans chapter 4 here tonight. Marcy, it's all yours. So I wanted to kind of start out uh, tonight with this uh, quote that I got from William Greathouse in the New Beacon Bible Commentary. Um, that kind of talks about what we're what we've been talking about the few the last few weeks. Um, so he says the whole passages. So um, Romans two seventeen through four twenty five is about God's covenant with Israel through Israel for the world, and about the true worship at the heart of the covenant, the worship of the true God, which replaces the idolatry of chapters one. 18 through 23, so Romans 1, 18 through 23, what we talked about there, and thus undoes the sin of Romans 1, 24 through 32. Um, so I kind of wanted to, to bring that in. And so tonight we're talking about Abraham, one of our forefathers of our faith, how Abraham, against all human reason for hope, hoped on in faith. I think in this troubled time, hope and faith are two of the things that we really need to hold on to. Now, Paul is once again talking about how good works is not th is the fruit, not the root of salvation. As we discussed in one of the classes, y you don't work for your faith. Or as we discussed in one of my classes I took recently, um, you don't work for your faith, but your faith does go to work. In this chapter, he's going to make an argument about how it is faith that is the root of our salvation, not work. So, RJ, do you want to kind of expand a little bit that on that thought for a moment of how good works is not the root of our salvation, but the fruit fruit of our salvation? Yeah, I mean, I think it it definitely. Uh leads us to think about, so, so when we think about the, the root, when we think about uh, of, a, of a tree or a plant or, or something that has, has a root, it goes deep and, and it sustains the thing that grows. And so the, our, the fruit is the thing that comes out of that sustenance, right? So if we're, think, we're thinking about works, we're thinking about what it is that, that works are in our lives, work, the works comes out of our life. And so if it's coming out of our life, it's coming out of the thing that sustains us. So if it's, if it's a good root that's sustaining us, it's not the things that we do. The, the things that we do 
uh, are in response to a good root system, a good, a good system that's, that's giving life, that's, that's bearing that fruit out of us. So I think that's the, the distinction there is that fruit doesn't show us how we're good. It's proof of whether we have a good root system or not because we're going to have bad fruit or we're going to have good fruit. Um, and so the fruit is the, the proof of what actually is the root system that we have. Right. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Um, let's read Romans um, 4, verses 1 through 8. Um, RJ, do you want to read that real quick? Uh, Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Uh, what then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness." David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. So Paul begins by asking two questions in this section. What then shall we say? And what does Scripture say in verse 3? Well, what shall then shall we say is in verse 1, and what th does Scripture sh say in verse 3? In verse 1, Paul is basically asking, did Abraham find justification before God on the basis of some achievement of his flesh? Uh, Paul goes on to say in verse 3 that righteousness was credited to Abraham. That is what Scripture says. Uh, when we when we go to work, our wages are not credited or a gift, but an obligation. That is what Paul is saying there in verse 4. And then um, where, where he says, Now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. Um, and so then Paul brings up one of David's psalms. RJ, do you want to discuss... Um, the Paul's argument basically in these first eight verses kind of explain um, what he's saying and why he's saying it this way and this credited and and works and gifts and and uh, wages and all that how he's you know why he's saying that the way that he's saying it so I think the the big thing that we we kind of tend to to land on in in, in America in today's world I think a lot of times we we do something and then it's something is given back to us because we've done it, right? So even if it's, if it's we work, then we get paid. Um, if it's, you know, some of this kind of quid pro quo uh, things in, in our relationships in the, in the world. So I do something for you, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. And so we, we kind of live, we, we do, we live in this world in this way where it's, it's, it's reciprocal, right? And I think what Paul is telling us here is that God, uh, 100%, he gives the gift of life to us without requiring a work, right? Without requiring us getting it right for a, an extended amount of time or a certain amount of time. or it, it's, a, it's a gift. It, the, the, word, the, the gift of God is a gift. It's not, it's not an obligation um, by God. Because, not obligation under the sense that we've done something and now he's obligated to us. He's just promised it to us, right? Just as a parent promises love, as a parent promises, uh, you know, good gifts to their kids, um, they're, they're going to give it because they love their child. God loves you. God loves us. He lo I mean, he just, and he wants to give us the gift of salvation. Um, now, we, we do need to accept it. We do need to, to, to live out of it. But then that's where that, that, that fruit comes out from that salvation. And so uh, it's not the works that gets God's love. It's the being a child of God who accepts the gift of salvation uh, that God gives to us freely that then produces in us something that comes out of us. And I think that's, that's, that's the big thing is God's not obligated to us because we've done something, you know, done something right. We just, he just gives it because he's God. Yeah, so. yeah, it's this, this gift, not really a, because we've done this, we get these. Um, 
it's this gift that he gives to us. I mean, obviously, we still have to um, confess our sins and to come to him and all that. But it's not like something we can do um, to get this. And that's, you know, his, this credited as righteousness, as, as um, Paul's saying here, that Abraham's credited with righteousness. Um, so then let's go ahead and re- read Romans 4, um, 9 through 17. Verse 9, is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received circumcision as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then he is the father of all who believe but have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to them. And he is them, then, sorry, also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised but who also follow in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives his life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. So Paul, in these verses, gives us another co- two questions. Uh, his first one, is this blessedness only for the circumcised or is it also for the uncircumcised? And then under what circumstances was it credited? Uh, once again, Paul is like, let's see what the scriptures say. So Abraham was credited with righteousness before he was circumcised. So Abraham was circumcised in chapter 17 of Genesis. He was credited, or this was credited to him when he was a Gentile, uh, when God credited righteousness to him. So circumcision was the symbol not the reason for the righteousness. Now, uh, in this book that I have been reading through, this Romans, this N.T. Wright book, he said, one of the most solemn moments of a wedding ceremony comes when the bride and groom give or exchange wedding rings. The ring declares to the wearer, uh, the spouse, and to the whole wide world that this new relationship has come into being. A new covenant has been made, and the ring is a sign and a seal of the covenant. It speaks of endless love going on and on and on. And so I thought that was kind of a, a great analogy, like a, a symbol, like this was a symbol. Circumcision didn't wasn't the reason why he was credited righteousness, but it was a symbol that he had been. Right. So like his, his righteousness was given to him as a... Um, because of his faith, it was credited, in his, uh, credited to him as righteousness. And so then, later on, he gets circumcised, um, which is, like you said, the symbol. So to compare that to the rings, I like that because the, the ring itself, and I, I love my wedding ring. I love that it's a symbol of, of my devotion to my wife and my uh, promise um, to, my, to my wife and to, to God himself. Um, promise to me, you know, to remind me of, of the promise I've made. But yet, we can, we can break that promise, right? Just because I wear the ring doesn't mean I'm, you know, guaranteed to... to and, and, and there are plenty of people that don't wear the ring uh, that are faithful to, 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 to the end, um, to, to the person that they're committed to. And so I, I think it's very important to understand that symbolism versus... Um, I don't know what word I put in there, but the, the symbolism of, of circumcision is not the... The or circumcision is not the end goal, right? It's just a symbol of what has already taken place. Well, it's already taken place inside of Abraham. He, he, so, but so because of that, 
he f- then followed the law that mm-hmm. God had put in place, yes. right? So that's the, so for us, when we become saved and we start to, to get into God's word more and we start to, to, to realize that there's, there's more and more truth in his word and, and it's the best way to live and there's so many good things, we're not going to know all that right away, but we still have a faith in God and God looks at us in a righteous kind of way. Yes, yeah. But as we learn more, whoo, we dive in. Just, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I don't like talking about circumcision all that much for a grown man, but for Abraham to be willing to do that as a grown man, uh, he, he really believed what the Word said. You know, and there's things in the Word of God that are just going to be so kind of out of the box for us sometimes or so against the norm for us sometimes, and especially if we've lived an entire, you know, however many, 20, 30, 40 years without following it. But once we become aware of it, if our faith truly is in God and God has credited it to us as righteousness, just as he did with Abraham, we will follow what the Word of God says. Uh, and and our, sim- our symbol is baptism. Um, that kind of, and, and so that's, that's, there's a real, that's good. Uh, and it's good for us to understand that, that the gift of God is not just for those who have followed the rules. One, we know it's impossible to follow the rules. We have tons of scripture that talk about that. But, you know, I, so I, I don't know how you feel about that. The, the, the truth is, like, it's not for a certain set of people. It's not for uh, the religious, you know, the, the, the right type of religious person. The gift of God is literally for everyone. And then once they've accepted that gift, man, then they get to dive into the better mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, right there, like right in that, that verse 16, um, therefore the promise comes by faith so that it may be the grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring, not only those who are of the law, but also for those who have the faith of Abraham. And uh, so in the commentary that I read, it said that this was making the point that it is the believers, not observers of the law, that continue the seed, quote, seed of Abraham, the heirs of the promise he received. Um, and so and another thing I wanted to kind of point out, uh, sorry, I kind of skipped, was that verse 15, that transgression. Now, this was a um, a willful disobedience. That's what that means there, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is n- no transgression, so no willful disobedience there. Um, this is an interesting thought, because so 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 I read that, and I, I would read that. So, because the law brings wrath, uh, that that's finishing the thought from verse fourteen. Um, uh, for if those who depend on the law are heirs, right? Uh, Faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless. So, if we're depending on the law, mm-hmm. um, then, then there's there's no there's no there's no hope there's no future mm-hmm. for just depending on the law, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. So, uh, if there's no law, there's no transgression. Hey, why don't we just live without the law, right? Why don't we just get rid of of, of the law and say hey, well, we can't break? Let's just live according to what I think God's telling me. We've seen the dangers of that yeah. throughout all of history, throughout the Bible. We see, mm-hmm. we see that, that, that God has given us the law so that we can see that we need a Savior, yes. that we need more than just our own selves to do this. We can't do this in our own strength. Mm-hmm. Abraham couldn't do it in his own strength. God had to give him the ability to, to follow him and obey him and to do that uh, faithfully, and then it was credited to him as righteousness yeah. because he followed the will, the word and the will of God in his life. And, and then, you know, as we have discovered, uh, you know, throughout uh, the time with, with Moses bringing in the, in the Ten Commandments and then the, 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 the addition of the law through, uh, you know, Leviticus and, 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 the, and the Old Testament law and the prophets like this, we, we start to see that God absolutely has ways for us to live. And we can follow those to the letter, but we will fail. We will fail. We, we will not be able to complete. And so this idea of the symbolism of being guaranteed with a promise, that's God knows. God knows that we can't get it right every time. Mm-hmm. And so he's, he's made this promise with us. Um, and, and, we, and we get into the new, the new covenant with Jesus, and that's a beautiful thing. But, but the reality is it's still beautiful in the old covenant. Mm-hmm. That, that is God credited to Abraham as, as righteousness, his faithfulness. doesn't mean he was perfect. It means that he believed God and followed what God had for him, uh, and we can do the same today. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and um, next, I kind of wanted to, to bring up. Um, oh, okay. So in verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. And then I found this other, you know, great uh, William Greathouse quote out of the commentary. It says, the hope of believers is unquenchable, not because of an optimistic outlook on life, but because they rely on the God who raises the dead, who creates out of nothing, who justifies the ungodly, and who says to the childless man, I have made you the father of many nations. I, I think that's such a great thing for us to hold on to, as is specifically right at this time. You know, like we, we have a God who raises the dead, who created out of nothing, who uh, justified the ungodly, and said to the childless men, I have made you the father of many nations. I mean, hope hope is, is everything. Um, without the hope of Jesus Christ, without the hope of, of heaven, without the hope of our relationship with God, whatever we're facing today, whether it's the coronavirus or it's, it's uh, cancer, uh, losing a job, um, you know, marriage problems, um, any, no matter, put whatever you want in there, hope gets us through, right? Hope in a God who, who has the answers that even if it doesn't come, even if the answer to our problem doesn't come in our lifetime, we have hope of an eternal reward and that God will continue to still work on redeeming the world in his time. Uh, and again, we're not, our life is not going to be perfect even when it comes down to the time for us to leave this earth, right? But we, I still have hope in, in, in where I will end up, not as a different place necessarily or like that I want to leave this world for a better one. My, my reality is that my hope is in Jesus Christ. So if I live in that hope now, when death comes, I, I preached on this Sunday, when death comes, it's just a change of address. It's just that the hope continues on um, for, for what God is going to do to redeem this world. And so, I think that's awesome. The hope, no matter what situation you put in there, and there's, he lists four, but it can, it, can, it can cover anything. The God who raises the dead, that you know, God who, who literally can, can heal anybody, right? If he can raise the dead... He can heal anybody of anything. So whatever you're facing out there, whatever, whatever sickness you're dealing with, God can heal you, whether it's in this life or the next, right? Uh, the, the, the God who creates out of nothing, right? We believe that about this world, that God spoke and the world came into existence. And that's just, it's a beautiful thing. And so if he can do that, he can create uh, anything that he wants, and, and he can have the answer to whatever problem you're facing. I just think that's, that's so good. Justifies the ungodly. They don't care how far... You've sinned. I don't care how, how far away you've walked from him. He is waiting for you to just turn around. You don't even have to walk back. Just turn around, and he's there to carry you home. The one who says to the childless man, I have made you the father of many nations. Man, his promises are, are true, right? So I just, that's good. Hope, it doesn't matter what you're facing. Hope is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going on with this idea of hope, let's go ahead and read this next section, um, Romans 4, 18 through 25. Uh, oh, that's great. 4, 18 is one of my favorite verses. Uh, Mine too. <laughs> uh, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and, faith and gave glory to God, because or being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written for him alone, or sorry, were not written for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Mm. Right. Um, 
Romans 4.18 is one of my favorite verses as well. And I have looked it up in, in several different versions. And one of my favorite is um, in the Amplified Bible where it says, For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations as he had been promised. So numberless shall your descendants be. Um, so it is, it's against human reason. It was against human reason for Abraham and Sarah, so Abram and Sarai, to believe that God was going to give them a child. Like we, I've, I grew, I've grown up hearing that story all of my life. Right? I've been, been, been in church from day one. I've known this story forever. And now as a, as a father, as a parent, you know, uh, and my kids aren't that. I just had a new baby and then having a four-year-old. I still remember like the, the angst of, of the unknown even in that. You know, you got to wait that nine months. Abraham waited decades, right, for this yeah, promise yeah. to be fulfilled. And so it was against hope. Sarai was, was barren, right? Mm -hmm. She was barren. And that's, we hear that today and we start going through, well, so what are my other mm -hmm. options, right? Yeah. They did the same thing. Let me throw my mistress, you know, up in there so that, that you can have this child, right? Yes. That's, and, and, and so we, but we do the th same things, hopefully not as maybe immoral as that, but we, we you know, we, we look for, you know, different in vitro fertilization. We look for, um, you know, adoption. We look for mm -hmm. surrogates, those kinds of things that we, we try to say, man, God's giving me a promise. I'm going to be a, a dad. I'm a, we're going to be a family. Mm -hmm. And, and yet we, 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 we look through all of it because it's against human reason yeah. to just believe that God's going to overcome whatever, whatever thing is in the way. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, we don't do that well. Today. Even with a story like this, even with that verse, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't do that. We don't hope well. We look at our human reasoning, and, and, I, and I think God's given us a sound mind to, to work through that stuff and to think through that stuff and to do smart things and to act in those kinds of ways. But man, when God's given you a promise, hold on to that promise. Mm -hmm. And against hope, Mm -hmm. believe in hope yeah I mean, that's good what you said reminded me of this story um of uh, this friend that i had once and her, her and her husband they were unable to have kids and so uh they just the doctor said you're it's not going to happen they went through the adoption process and literally as they f were picking up their child they like the next month they found out she was pregnant <laughs> it was like you know he knew that they had both knew that god had told them that they were going to have a family and they were willing to open that up to adoption and things like that and and you know but literally so now she, this then she was raising two babies <laughs> that weren't twins but you know like it, nine months apart because they had just adopted one and found out they were pregnant and it was like amazing to see how god worked that through that whole situation and right. and went through you know even when the doctor said there was no hope in this happening you know god worked through it all and he does yeah he can create out of nothing mm -hmm. absolutely um so the just kind of going back to that fact i mean there in the scripture it says abraham faced the fact that his body was dead and that sarah's womb was was dead as well um but it said Abraham's faith had grown to realize that thi that this uh, um, he c he could not secure this promise by his own human strength. Right. Um, he had a faith in a God who raised from the dead and created out of nothing, and he did not waver, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. I, I just I, like I want to point out again, like it said, and Paul says, I mean, he, Paul says it right there. Um, Verse, verse 20, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his face and gave glory to God. And yet he was, we know the story, mm -hmm. right? Hagar w was involved there. Like it, you, can't, you can't deny that he did try to take things into his own hands. Yeah. How much that gives me so much hope knowing where I have tried to do things in my own strength and have failed, mm -hmm. um, that God is still going to look at me uh, as righteous. If my faith stands, right? And so Abraham, I don't think taking Hagar or even Sarah, giving him Hagar um, to try to have a child that way, they, they weren't doubting the promise of God. Right. They just, in their human understanding, and the same thing in our human understanding, we don't, we don't see the big picture. We don't see the whole thing that God sees. And so 
we can trust and we can hope and we can try to persevere. And I know we get into that next week with, with, with chapter 5, but the reality is, even in our, in our faith in God, we've got to be really careful about how we operate in that, in that hope, in that faith, because we can still try to take things in our own hands, yeah. right? And, 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 and the story is, we, we, it ends up being great, and Paul is, is just glowing here for Abraham, and, mm-hmm. and rightfully so, but, but the son that came from Hagar and you know, Ishmael and, and, and Isaac that came from, from Sarai, like there was tension there. Yeah. There, was, there was real trouble in that, in that day and age when they were going through that. So uh, when we try to take it into our own hands, it's, it might work out. It, it, it's good. God's promises are going to come true. But when we try to do it in our own strength, we absolutely will see some of those uh, problems still come forth. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So um, there, Paul makes the argument that it was credited to him, um, was, not, was written not just for Abraham, but written for us as well. Um, and so I kind of want to leave us on this, this question. Um, how can we as believers celebrate the God who promises impossible things and brings them to pass? Are you asking me that question? Well, I want everybody to kind of think about yeah, that question. I mean, that's, and that's tough because, so what impossible thing has God promised you? What impossible thing has he promised me? Um, and I don't know if I have an answer for that even specifically uh, in, in this moment as I'm thinking about that. But, you know, I don't know what health concerns you're going through. I don't know what, you know, family issues you're going through, job issues, all those kinds of things that you're, you know that God has promised. One promise we know that he's given all of us is that he works for the good of those who believe him, you know, and, and, and faithfully follow after him. So, like, it doesn't matter what the thing is that you're struggling with. God has promised to be working for your good. Mm-hmm. So can I trust that? And even that seems impossible sometimes because I mess up a lot, right? I, 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 I get things wrong a lot, and I, and I, and I work towards uh, my own ideas and my own hopes and, and, and God's got to wake me up from that sometimes. And so when I think about the things that are impossible, I think, you know, think, you know some of us might think about our attitudes that need to change, um, our, our personal habits that need to change, maybe some lifestyle choices that need to change, um, our, our relationships with our spouses need to change. These are some things that seem entirely impossible, especially in the moment. And then we know that we want to be good followers of Jesus, and so... We take things into our own hands sometimes and we get ahead of God or we, we try to do things that, that aren't necessarily outlined in the Word of God. Um, and yet God still is working to bring about those good things. And it's on us to, to get behind Him rather than ahead of Him or trying to work around. You know, we got, we've got to get behind Him. And for me, that's, that's what that means for me. And so we celebrate that. We celebrate that promise. We hold on to the promise. He is working for our good. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely working for our good. And I can, I can take a, a breath I don't have to figure this out. I don't have to know every detail of, of how this is going to work out. I'm choosing to trust in the one who is working for my good and in the only one who can actually bring about good mm-hmm. in my life. Right, right. Yeah, I um, I just think about, you know, some of these things that I might think is po- impossible. And, you know, God has said, you know, I'm going to work these things out and, and, you know, just to have that hope and that faith that n- even if it looks impossible for me, everything's possible for God. And so, you know, like I, I, I have a faith in a God who raises people from the dead. Like I, it may look impossible in all human aspects, um, but God is still God. And, and so, yeah, I just, you know, against all human reason for hope being gone, Abraham hoped on in faith and we need testimonies to that you know I, I don't oh man we need we need testimonies of marriages that have 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 come through the, the worst of times to still be to now be you know great times mm-hmm. we need testimonies of physical healings we need testimonies of these miracles that that just genuinely bypass all human reasoning right. where we can sh- just shout from the rooftops this is what my God has done this is what my God will continue to do in this world. Um, and I think that that's what we, we kind of miss out. We, we, we don't have, we, 
we struggle with hope because we don't hear about the miracles enough. And they're there. Mm-hmm. They're there. I, I'm just as guilty of not, not shouting them myself. Like we have to be we have to be ready and willing and able to share the truth of what God has done in us and through us and for us. Yeah, and I think that sometimes we don't talk about those things because we don't want to be that transparent. We don't want people to think that we've had these issues. And even if God has brought us through these issues, we don't want people to know that there were ever issues in the beginning because then what are we going to look like? Um, but really, that's what we're call- like. If As Christians, we just have to realize that we're all broken in different ways and that God has worked through that brokenness and um, is working on making us whole and um, just be transparent about those things, you know, m- maybe just in a small group at setting, but sometimes in a bigger setting where it's a testimony, you know, in front of multiple people. And and so, w- w- yeah, we need to s- hear more of these um, against all reason for hope being gone, hoping on in faith in God, you know, these wonderful stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's ab- about all I had. Uh, did you have any closing thoughts at all? No, I think this is a great chapter. I mean, the whole the whole book of Romans is fantastic, and I would encourage you to read through. You know, this week we're, we're in chapter 4, so uh, be reading through that. You get through that. Keep, you know, re- rewatch this or even some of the questions that Marcy brought up. Uh, you know, think about that as you read through this stuff um, and go on. But then get into R- R- Romans 5 and, and start to read ahead there and, and just kind of continue to keep in mind that God has something for us beyond what we can do ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not going to look the same for every person, and it's also not going to be easy. Um, there's going to be difficulties in life, just as there was difficulties for Abraham. And yet, as Paul looks back on the life of Abraham, he is just glowing about how God used him and how Abraham was faithful and God credited to him as righteousness and then that righteousness is available for us. So mm-hmm. yeah, I would encourage you to, 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 to go through this uh, slowly, read through these verses. The other thing I would do, you know, these, are gonna, these videos are going to be up on our, our Facebook pages. Um, when, you, when you're listening to it, because obviously we're not together, right? Uh, Marcy and I are trying to have our, our bubble here, our social distancing bubble, and uh, that's a good thing. And, and, and we know that that's, that's awkward at times and it's weird. We can't, it's hard to, to ask questions. But I want to encourage you, use the technology we have. Uh, when you're watching this on, on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, put questions down there. And I promise that Marcy and I will, will answer those questions to the best of our abilities. And I think that, that those are some really good things. So if you have a question, whether it's directly from the scripture that we talked about tonight or there's something else that's pressing on your mind, if you've got prayer requests that we can pray um, openly in these videos for, uh, I would encourage you to put those in those comment sections as well. And we will definitely remember to pray for those um, as we go forward with these videos. So, But I think that's, that's, that's what I've got. This is a great, great stuff tonight. Yeah, yeah. So as RJ said, we're going to be going through chapter five next week. So um, you can kind of go ahead and read ahead if you have some time after you go through four this week. Um, And we'll go, we'll jump into chapter five next week. I'm just really excited about where we are in Romans right now and where we are in, you know, as far as in comparison to where we are in the world. Um, you know, and then we're talking about this hope and faith, and, and man, I th- really do, that's something we've just got to hold on to right now um, in this time, and then, you know, next next week in our, uh, in these sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance in chapter five, so um, I'm just kind of excited as to where God kind of placed us right now um, to see him working through all of this, and what we're discussing in these, in these um, next few weeks, so um, and how he just kind of put that out there for us. So, um, RJ, would you go ahead and close us in prayer unless you have anything else you wanted to say? Oh, let, me, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, Lord God, you are good. And, and I just love this idea. Is, is he, uh, we read here and in so many other places, Peter talks about it. We even see it in the prophet Isaiah this, and, and many other places. But this idea of hope. And God, I, I believe that there's, there, there, are, there are many people that are afraid right now, and fear is, is, is passing from person to person uh, probably faster than, than this virus that, that the world is facing uh, can do. And Father God, I believe that if we were to hope in you with everything that we have, that would be even more contagious. 
uh, and we would see a spread of the good news of Jesus Christ throughout our communities, God, our neighborhoods, our families. So let us be filled with the hope of Jesus. Uh, wherever we go, whoever we see, uh, which may be limited right now, but Father God, we know that your, uh, your plan of salvation through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus, leads us into all hope. So Father God, just, just guide us, bless us. Would you be with those uh, who need healing? Be with those who need encouragement and uplifting. Father God, for those that might be even feeling very anxious in this day and age, that you would just, you would put your hand on their hearts and let them know that your word is true. Do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Help us, Father, to live one day at a time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.